Hi everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the PSO scope, which is everyone's favourite budget yet decent optic from our friend Prapor. We'll be running through the differences between the three options, showing what all of the markings mean, and most importantly, practically discussing how to use the rangefinder inbuilt into the scope. So stick around and let's get going. Alright, so as I said, we're going to do a rundown of the PSO today. Now, this scope is great for new players, firstly because of the number of weapons that this attaches to, and secondly because it's one of the first optics that you get easy access to via Prapo at the beginning of the game. Most importantly, we'll be checking out how to use the rangefinder on the scope to estimate the distances of enemy players. But before we get into the scope itself, let's just check out quickly which weapons we can fit these beauties to. The PSO attaches via the dovetail mount of various guns that have this rail, however unlike most modding in Tarkov, this is set by the weapon. This usually leads newer players to ask the question, how do I get a PSO scope onto the AKM? Unfortunately, the answer is that you can't, because it doesn't have the required dovetail mount to fit on, which is intrinsic to the weapon. However, despite being designed primarily for the SVD, there are many, many weapons that do have this inbuilt, like the AKM-N, which can make it very easy to slap on this scope for a decent four times in Tarkov. Within the AKs, you can attach the PSO to all of the 100 series weapons, so 101, 102, 103, etc., plus all of the N versions, such as the AKMN, and also the AK-74M, which is the modernised AK-74, and also the AKS-74UB, which is the suppressed and short version, which does also have a dovetail mount. Other options are the AS-VAL and VSS special rifles, the Saiga-12, not why you'd do this, I'm not entirely sure, the PP-19 Vichaz, and more typically, the SVDS, the Vepa Hunter, and the OP-SKS. With the SKS, please note that you cannot use it with the standard SKS, as this doesn't have a dovetail, but you need the hunting rifle version, and it also needs to have the OP SKS DT mount attached. If you don't buy an SKS from the flea with the mount, you'll have to get one from Jaeger level 2 unless you fancy paying 20000 on the market for it. All of these guns can take the PSO, but confusingly there are three PSO scopes in Tarkov, which begs the question, what is the difference between them? We have the Zenit Belomo PSO 1 4x24 scope, which is the first version that could be bought at the start of the game from Prapor level 1. Then we have the Zenit Belomo PSO 1M2 4x24 scope, which is only available on Prapor level 3. And finally, we have the Zenit Belomo PSO 1M21 4x24 scope from Prapor level 2 after completing his task Bad Rep Evidence. So first off, for all intents and purposes, there is no practical difference between the PSO 1 and the PSO 1M2, with the 1M2 being the latest version of the scope. In EFT, these are identical, except for some very minor cosmetic detailing that you can see on the screen. They both have the same reticle, and you should use them in exactly the same way between both the scopes. No need to make it any more complicated than that. The 1M21, as you can see, has a slightly different reticle, the difference here being that this scope was designed for use on shorter range weapons like the VAL and the VSS, which due to the bullet drop are better used for ranges that are under 400 meters. How this difference comes about, and how to actually use them, we'll take a look at next in order to explain what the markings on the reticles actually mean. So first off, we don't need to use the markers on either side of the main aiming point with the 10 markers. These are for windage, and in real life are used to estimate the impact of wind on range trajectories. Given we don't have any wind in Tarkov right now, we don't need to worry about this. Although I wouldn't put it past Nikita to want to implement this someday. Next let's have a look at the chevrons. So the main aiming chevron is supposed to be used alongside zeroing, so you estimate your distance to the target, which we'll get onto in a moment, range your scope to the correct zero, so for example 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 meters, and then take your shot, aiming using the primary chevron in the center. These ones underneath are for shooting at longer ranges than 1000 meters, which is very difficult in EFT because firstly there are so few places that you can do that kind of long range shooting, and secondly because you can only zero the PSO out to 300 meters in Tarkov, which kind of scuppers what these were designed to do. On the real PSO, once zeroed to 1000 meters, you can use the chevrons to range out an extra 100, 200 and 300 meters, so 1100, 1200 and 1300 meters in total. As I said, we're not really able to use this in game. 5 seconds before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already if you want to see more content like this in the future. Alright, let's carry on. Now, onto the really useful part of the scope, which is the estimate rangefinder. This is genuinely handy in EFT, and only differs slightly between the two scopes that we've looked at. The way that this works is assuming that the average adult's height is 1.7 meters, which is what this indicator means, you place their feet along this bottom line and move the scope until they fit within the two lines. Using the markings on the scope for 1000 meters down to 200 meters, this will give you an estimate of the distance where your target is at, in theory allowing you to zero the weapon to the correct level and then taking accurate shots using the main chevron. Now we can look at the difference between the PSO1 and the 1M21 version, and this section works exactly in the same way as we've just described for the previous scope, but it's a bit easier to use over the ranges that we're typically taking fights in in Tarkov. 
It's quite unusual to be taking shots over 400 meters in usual play, so I think that this version is probably more useful because the rangefinder is firstly wider on the scope, and secondly because of the limited ranges you can get a more accurate read on the distance when using it. In terms of zeroing, EFT is a whole other ball game that is kind of outside the scope, no pun intended, of this video, due to the way that it's set up for a specific default round for each weapon, but there are some good resources around on YouTube if you're interested in delving deeper into that topic specifically. One other minor point to mention about the PSO scope is the ability to illuminate the reticle, which can help with visibility in certain circumstances. This is controlled in RAID via the Change Scope Magnification button, which you can set in the controls. So one of the main disadvantages to using the PSO is that even though you're very good at fighting over long ranges, you can get surprised quite easily if somebody crops up really close to you and you have to suddenly fight in close combat. In real life, you can use the iron sights underneath the PSO on a variety of weapons, but currently this is not an option in Tarkov to cycle to them whilst the PSO is equipped. You can, however, attach a TT-01 and use a small reflex sight, but most of these combinations are not sensible. I didn't extensively test it with every single one, but I couldn't get it to work for the AKMSN because the PSO sits too low on the weapon. However, where this is useful is when you're using the Vepa Hunter, as you can easily use the TT-01 to attach a Pilad Weaver for example, and as the scope sits a bit higher on this gun, you can use the standard control and right click to switch between them. You do block out a considerable part of the screen with a large optic, but this does give you a nice way to combat the issue of close range fights when using the PSO, as it doesn't have the variable zoom like other scopes do, which can give you issues if you stumble upon an enemy at close range and suddenly need to engage. So that's all for today, if you found the information useful please consider subscribing as it really helps out the channel. It's free and you can always unsub at any time. You can also follow me on Twitter and Twitch to catch me when I'm live. Until then, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.